Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, the county, the state, and possibly the nation. As we get into the weekend, it is uh, November 16th, and I'll be doing my show next Wednesday, but I won't be doing my show next Friday. So we don't have fl- we have a flagship Friday special for you guys today, um, and we have some pre-critic. We got a couple city council stuff. They're going to be talking about the uh, new uh, addition, uh, additional warming facility for homeless folks this winter, and they're doing it. It's an emergency uh, interim um, zoning ordinance they're going to be talking about, and we also have um, many other things, and a brand new art clip for you guys as well, but let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Uh, it is 38 degrees outside. It's going to be a little bit warmer than it has been. We have a little more cloud coverage, but there is that winter advisory warning, so it's rainy, wet, but it might get a little colder and start transferring over until some of that snow with that 80% precipitation going down right now, uh, 20% tonight and then of course Saturday you're going to have a clear sunny day. It's going to be mostly clear so it's going to get colder and colder with lows into the 14 degree temperatures Fahrenheit. And then of course by Monday it's going to be partly sunny. We're going to have uh, basically a nice clear weekend uh, for the uh, Grizz Cat game as we dive into it. So let's talk about some news that are helping locally and in a turn of events many speakers have dropped out since hearing former campaign strategist for Trump Steve Bannon will be the keynote speaker. Um, in an email organizer, uh, organizer Adam Choke uh, confirmed at the ACE um, International Conference on Advanced uh, Advances in Computer Entertainment Technology is totally shut down aside from the appearance of Bannon. Uh, Bannon, uh, he's uh, not quick to give up, uh, has um, invited you and professors to debate him. And he wants to have an open forum um, with Q&A from the audience. Bannon will deliver the keynote, take part in a question and answer session with the audience, and participate in an academic academic debate. Bannon pushed a nationalist agenda to help elect President Tr- Donald Trump. Many speakers who dropped out claim Bannon has no right to speak about science and technology in the first place. In state news, uh, while mussels have been in headlines um, in recent years, other outdoor invasive plants and species have grow uh, have been growing steadily in some ways and some time now in Montana organization or in the Montana organization Montana Invasive Species Council has conducted a legal review of invasive species law and regulations. The review covered federal, state, tribal, and local jurisdictions and found a number of overlapping and gaps in funding and authority. So the issue is is like, hey wait, you can't pull that weed. Oh wait, no, wait, you can pull that weed. You ha- you didn't ask us if you could pull that weed. He's like, well, that's invasive species. I know, but we have to pull that weed. So that's kind of like the situation they have there. Uh, development of comprehensive lists of invasive species as well as a framework for prioritizing them is one of the steps the council could undertake. So assess, adhere, achieve is necessary when it comes to working with many organizations who have the same goal. But again, it's authority. Who's the boss? And without budgets for many years... Uh, to get rid of non-native plants. The 2014 Montana Invasive Species Summit is being held in Helena currently, and it will happen from now until about noon today. And of course, they'll have a couple breakout sessions for people with ideas from one to five. It's gonna be held at the um, Delta Hotel Conference Room at in Helena. So. Uh, National News, the Food and Drug Administration announced Thursday that they will seek a ban on sales of menthol-flavored cigarettes. Part of the uh, growing trend of flavored e-cigarettes and stuff like that, um, the FDA has decided to take action in terms of flavored uh, cigarettes, which were the ones that perpetuated a lot of uh, teen smoking back in the day. The FDA claims that the specific type of cigarette is what caused many teenagers to smoke in the past and hopes to lessen the amount of options when it comes to cigarettes. While cigarette smoking has hit a record low in the United States, vaping has been skyrocketing. That trend has uh, raised concerns with a new generation of young people will become addicted to nicotine. All this is, be, uh, all this is because of flavor. Uh, from many options of vaping to the more flavored cigarettes like menthol cigarettes is especially popular among African Americans, according to FDA, leading some to uh, charge that tobacco companies have been using uh, flavoring to target minorities. The proposed ban will uh, require a lengthy rulemaking process by the FDA before it goes into effect. So that's kind of what's happening in the nation. There's still a lot more going on here. There's um, more information about the uh, the fires down in California. You can check all that out, npr.com, npr.org, Missoulian, and Helena independentrecord.com for more information about these news stories and more. But here's a couple new 
program is going to be airing on MCAT. So, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some crappy movies that are coming out. And uh, so then you find your name, and you register that with the state, and which is you just find that online. I don't know if I put the address for you. Uh, once you register with the state, I, I highly recommend that you get an EIN so that that is what your taxes are under, not your social security number, because that can get really tricky. Um, so once you have your DBA and the letter from the state about your DBA, then, and you also have your EIN, then you can go to the bank and get your uh, publishing bank account. And then when you have all that done, then you can go and set up your accounts on the different vendors. So it gets a little time consuming, but it's well worth it in the end. Let's keep the door open. And I think that is a kind of tender gesture to everyone in the world we live in now. That we might all find survival easier if we could learn to keep the door open rather than always slamming it shut. And that is what I think I hear in Natalie's poems and will be resident for years to come. Thank you very much. Miranda is in the tribal constitution textually. And so the Rosebud Sioux Supreme Court decided that Miranda is part of Rosebud Sioux Tribe's constitutional law because there's language to that effect right in the tribe's constitution, one of its recent amendments. And I was... Try to keep my language clean. <clears throat> my students generally wouldn't believe that. But it, that was sort of problematic to me to read Gillette, and there's not a single reference mm -hmm. to Rosebud Sioux Tribe versus uh, Luxon. And so, to me, an important element in thinking about uh, 117A prosecutions is what role does tribal law, tribal constitutional law, tribal decisional law play in any of this? I, I'm not saying I know what the answer is. But I think at a minimum, judges should be thinking about that, even if they ultimately decide it's not appropriate. Uh, because it, it might be national forage, forest uh, management standards, uh, things adopted in the forest plans that relate to habitat. Uh, in our case, uh, we're not the national forest. We have no control over that. Um, our commission, we manage wildlife in the sense of both um, both human take on wildlife, which may be through hunting, but we also work on control, um, work with private landowners, try to address um, try to address uh, problems that landowners have with wildlife. Um, sometimes it's control actions. We try to do prevention. Uh, we try to do education. We work extensively uh, to try to eliminate problems ahead of time. Hey guys, welcome back to this exciting <laughs> um, continuation of, hey guys, let's talk about um, some movies that are coming out this week. Kicking it off is Not Harry Potter, starring Not Harry Potter people. Uh, grab your cloak and prepare your wands because it's the magical world of Harry Potter without Harry Potter. Join Newt and the gang as they hang out and become active in the within the world of Harry Potter without Harry Potter as they fight the bad, bad wizard. So... 
so bad they got Johnny Depp to play him. Uh, they also have fan favorites like Dumbledore. Uh, Hides behind his Kaiden demeanor uh, as he pulls the strings behind the scenes to get what he wants. Uh, kind of means justify the ends kind of guy. Uh, you can probably see a trail uh, that turns into a uh, a trial. Sorry, not a trail. A trial that turns into a harrowing escape from Grindel with Grindelwald, which is what this the title of the movie is called, Crimes of Grindelwald. All according to plan according to the villains, and more so as we get deeper into the world that pe many people ha uh, already expect from th this series. Moving on, there's another movie. Um, Mark Wahlberg is back as a family man with Rose Brynn. Uh, basically, uh, they, uh, they go to adopt kids, and they get more than they bargained for. Uh, this foster family gets a little wacky as we dive into the holiday movie season. So let me save you some time. Family comes to, uh, family comes to the kid, uh, wait, wait, what? I gotta re I gotta rewrite this stuff, but a family um, um, so uh, a family of kids who only want to stay together. Uh, these adults know nothing. Um, some time passes. One of the kids connects with um, one of the family members, and the others follow. But of course, there's always a holdout, and there's always has to be a grand gesture at the end. Maybe there's like a attempted kidnapping, or maybe the kid goes to see their biological parents, and their parents are just like completely uh, burnouts, and they're just like, oh, I'm completely disappointed, but I'm here for you, and then they have a better happy family situation at the end of the movie. That's usually how it works. It's always like, you're not my dad, and then they're just like, you may not be my dad, but you're my father. That kind of deal. It's, it's the same word, means the same thing. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> welcome to a crime ridden world where gangsters makes widows pay their husbands' debts, which results in widows doing the exact same thing that they got their husbands killed in the first place. Watch a group of women come into their own as not only rob a bank, but turn the tables on their gangsters, which I'm pretty sure is going to happen. It's like the gangsters is like, you owe me money. It's like, I don't owe you money. It's like, your dead husband owes me money, which means you owe me money. We're not a bank. We're gangsters. We can rough you up. Who cares? And uh, of course, you know it always happens where they always like like uh, like two heists. One heist is to steal the money, while the other heist is to set up the gangsters to take the fall. That's usually how it works. Well, um, of course, they never call the police in the first place, which is anybody's guess. But I suppose it's like uh, you know they you know the widows probably like the situation that they their uh, husbands put them in. Uh, you know, because of the you know, comforts and, you know, their their husbands are professional bank robbers and it's like, oh, we're used to this certain type of lifestyle, so let's continue the last lifestyle and pay off our husband's debt so we can continue doing this thing. And anyways, movie, movie, bang, bang. That's kind of what this whole movie is about. Okay, so you guys got another movie. It's Flagship Friday, which means I'm going to show you a video from the flagship program, um, uh, MCAT's Film Club. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some city council. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> What seems to be a weapon. It seems like a weapon of some sort. What was that? Wait! He bumps into someone that is quite strange. Oh. Hey, watch where you're going. Oh, sorry, I was chasing something. Let me help you with this. What are those? Uh, these, sir, are my shoes. Not those, those! Well, what's, what's a manga, and the other and the other three are three editions of the uh, Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead. He questions his strange affiliation. What are books, and what do you do with them? You don't want to, never mind. How did you get here? I walked through the doors over there, and then I saw this strange creature. I started to follow it, and then I ran into you. Maybe you can help me get out of here. What year is this? 2018. How long have you been here? Long enough. Can you help me find this creature? Then they embarked on a journey to find the monster that we see. Oh. oh, there he is! They have discovered the monster and now they will chase him. The adventurers have finally caught the creature. They will now get him to tell them the way out or destroy him. Tell us the way, the way out or we'll destroy you. Stop lying. We're gonna destroy you. 
The adventurers have finally defeated the monster. Now, it's time to leave. It's like the movie, Get Out, but makes sense. <laughs> Just kidding. They both don't make any sense. All right, let's continue on with a uh, couple uh, city council items. The first one, uh, rise in shelter numbers and the strain on the, that's placed both on staff and facilities recently at the Pavarello Center to cap winter services to 175 individuals. Prior to this cap, there were upwards of 20 individuals per night that were unable to access services at the Pav. Uh, the Missoula Service community swiftly uh, convened considering alternatives. Uh, these conversations resulted in Salvation Army's generous offer to operate a winter warming center during this year's coldest winter months. Here's Teresa Williams uh, with the organization Reaching Homes, campaign to end homelessness in 10 years. She talks about the Salvation Army a little bit more. The facility off Russell Street is ideal for several reasons. The building was designed with emergency and disaster relief services in mind. It has large open spaces, showers, washers and dryers, and a commercial kitchen on site. Additionally, the Salvation Army is an identified access point for, uh, within Missoula's coordinated entry system working to house our most vulnerable individuals experiencing homelessness. To protect the public health, safety, and welfare of individuals during the fast approaching coldest winter months, we are requesting that Council set a public hearing to consider the passage of an interim zoning ordinance 76-2-306 MCA, allowing the Salvation Army to provide this service from December 11th, 2018 through April 1st, 2019. Abiding by the process as allowed in City Ordinance 3519, it would take several months and would impede the community's ability to prevent unnecessary weather-related injuries and death. This request is being made due to the urgency of the issue. As a community, we are working towards more comprehensive and lasting solutions. For example, any emergency weather response should be coupled with strong diversion efforts. Diversion helps people identify housing options outside of the homeless assistance assistance system, improving the ability of a homeless system to target limited shelter and housing resources effectively to the most vulnerable individuals. Diversion is currently being implemented at all of our access points within coordinate entry. Salvation Army is the only access point with diversion funding in the form of transportation assistance. Their staff help facilitate connection to housing with family members, treatment, etc. The coordinated outreach team is presently engaging in diversion conversations with folks that do not have an emergency shelter option right now. Our hope is to expand diversion efforts in future years. All right, but so far, uh, this uh, diversion effort from the Salvation Army will cover from uh, December until April 2019. It's considered an emergency ordinance in which the city council will uh, have a special meeting being held public hearing on uh, the day after Thanksgiving, November 23rd, to talk about this a little bit more. Mike Haynes and other staff members were able to come together, get a presentation together, um, literally the day before Wednesday. Of course, this would be a recommended motion to set public hearing on November 23rd after Thanksgiving, which gives seven days notice to be published in the paper for special meeting on that day. So they're going to publish in the paper. There's always has to be seven days notice published to the public before they do any items that can affect Missoula. Since the this is an emergency interim zoning ordinance allowing Salvation Army to temporarily operate a winter warming center, um, of course, like I said before, it'll start in December and end April 2019 as the weather starts improving a little bit better. Parks and conservation, uh, as we live in a rapidly changing world and the team uh, and, the, and the climate action um, energy and uh, climate team has made progress in many areas. Further direction from the council f uh, would be construct uh, constructive. Knowing the direction to pursue in areas of climate change to emphasize would make more impactful community engagements via this team. Uh, Chase Jones, I, um, 
wants to create a system that would let businesses owners to come down to the city and be able to put up solar panels on the roof three almost three days later quinn jones uh, reflects on some of these efforts that the team has made this is great news it's exciting to see this and i think with i mean my personal impression with solar any you know alternative energy forms it's always two steps forward one step back it's just a it, it's a process it's a culture switch and so to have people like you that keep at it i think is fantastic and our goal i hope is that this is our new normal that solar all right so uh that was gwen jones and uh next uh we got um some of the uh, plans is in the works and many programs such as our Missoula when it comes to community development and Missoula Redevelopment AGGs can look to redevelop. So uh, Julie Armstrong is looking to gain support from higher levels of government and this is what she had to say. In that vein of being ambassadors that the specific wins that we've had in Missoula we probably need to publicize those a little bit more and try to attract more federal dollars and leverage those locally. The, the one thing we're really bad about doing in Missoula is marketing ourselves. And I think this would be one of the things that would attract businesses. It would attract um, legislators to focus on Missoula, maybe put some dollars here to, to forward some of these objectives. But I think the team... You know, I'm all about I'm all about marketing Missoula, right, and attracting the right kind of businesses. And I think the greener that we are, will attract the businesses that will help us move forward effectively. So. All right, so that was Julie Armstrong. Um, the next thing uh, topic they were, they were talking about is uh, about how uh, higher government in Montana is kind of falling behind, and Missoula is r trying really hard to help move this forward, but there's a lot of uh, red tape and barriers in the legislature that prevent this from happening, and here's Chase Jones again. It's, it's super important and, and represent a, a lot of barriers that, that we need to overcome and, and affect change. They, they've focused on, on that in the past, um, and we're going to need to retool that a little bit if it remains one of that team's focus. And that comes down to the timing of the legislature. It moves super fast, and because of the nature and bylaws of this group, they can't. And so they have felt frustrated in the past, even though they've reviewed bills, they've provided really thoughtful input um, because of how it has to happen. Um, that input has not been able to be delivered timely. That doesn't mean it can't exist. We just need in our refocusing and recalibration to figure out a way to, to have that information flow a little bit more quickly. All right. And, uh, of course, some of the issues that the uh, energy and climate team have been dealing with um, is that they meet once a month. Um, and many uh, times, uh, and, and time especially, if they have to go back to committee and waiting the team's approval, because you got to think about it, it's the information, and that if there's a motion to change certain things, it has to go back to committee, and then they had to, would have to meet in that once a month kind of uh, setup. They asked some questions about the city council about um, try to get this to help move forward, but there are no elected officials, but only subcommittees can meet as well. Subcommittees could help in the larger scheme, but overall they'd have to have their once a month meeting approval before before they move forward on presenting an item to the city council. So it's very complicated, but it takes a lot of work. And Chase Jones talks about the efforts uh, from volunteers and how difficult it is to um, basically rally people to help push this agenda. If the hardest part is the collection of data, yeah. and it requires relationships, and it requires really just a lot of time of which I'm not certain this group is, is well suited for that. Um, it would be a tremendous help if they were and could, but they are citizen volunteers. They have full-time jobs like yourselves, and it really requires just a lot of persistence and a lot of time on the phones and meeting with people and, um, and those kinds of things. And so uh, I, I would love help in, in that regard. Um, we can discuss and, and it should be on the table, perhaps, for this team. But uh, it's not a perfect fit in my mind because of those reasons. All yeah. right. So that was Chase Jones. And I have a very last quote from Brian von Losberg, who uh, kind of reflects about how um, kind of uh, um, frustrated he is with trying to get the trying to get smart climate action um, pro initiatives passed in the state of Montana. 
we really need, if, if you tie back to the New York Times uh, article or any of the reporting done on the most recent IPCC report, you know, the, the overwhelming uh, takeaway is we have to do things differently and we have to do them differently immediately, which, you know, we're all faced with the conundrum of, but we're not. <laughs> and so... Uh, I'm all for, you know, the energy code work is interesting, but it, it's a plotting, you know, resonance and commercial business by commercial business sort of thing. And um, I look at the 100% uh, like um, renewable um, clean electricity initiative, and, you know, we have opportunities in this community for significant scale generation, but we're constrained by antiquated, uh, regulation and um, just governing uh, issues with PSC and state law and um, I personally would love us to um, to challenge those those constraints and, and be incredibly aggressive about challenging those constraints and I also think the benefit there is it, it draws enormous attention uh, to this so that's a overwrought plug for the, the last one. Um, and, and again, I'd, I'd love for that team to be, I'm, I'm guessing probably everybody on the team has read uh, some various reports, if not the report itself, uh, the IPCC report. And sorry, I'm, I got it. Uh, sorry. Um, I meant to cut him off a little bit earlier, but the whole point was is to uh, kind of establish a uh, not necessarily um, – uh, the, like have a more established team, but also have a an, a, go a good example that c they can take forward to the uh, legislature, government, PSC, all those organizations to be like, hey, the, not only is this good for the environment, which a lot of times people don't really care about, honestly. Um, if it costs more than it's worth, then there's no point in getting it. And um, if you're running a business, it's you're basically putting a substantial risk and losing money, and y you can't run a successful business if you uh, burn money. And that's some of the reasons why a lot of people don't uh, go into solar energy and those kind of energies and some of those kind of uh, clean energy type deals. But this is like one of those things that has to be kind of like, um, there's, you know, like they have to change the culture. You know, there's always been a stigma against it in terms of this. But of course, this was an updated item only. And the energy and climate team in Missoula will continue to promote and seize any opportunity to get clean in energy implemented here in Missoula. So that was kind of that. You can watch the whole meeting and more by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, that meeting was the. I believe that was the Parks and Conservation meeting, and also you can watch the Land Use and Planning meeting as well. So I have a brand new article for you guys, um, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about some things that are happening uh, today and tomorrow and this weekend uh, in terms of what you can do. So stay with me. I'll be right back right after this brand new art clip provided by our very own Rick Phillips. Hey guys, if you're having trouble trying to figure out what you're going to do this weekend, hey, why not go to MissoulaEvents.net? Um, for right now, 
I got your highlights for, from Zoolevents.net just to kind of see, uh, nitpick and pick some things, and I'm going to tell you about them. Um, can the Cats is still going on. You can go to Missoula Food Bank and various locations around town to donate your dry goods and non-perishables to help can the cats. So it's a, it's a fundraising effort to... Uh, for both the city of Missoula and um, the, city, uh, the city of Bozeman, Gallatin County, to uh, raise as much food as we possibly can in the spirit of good sportsmanship, um, and the and the winner gets bragging rights. But the winners are everybody. So, anyways, uh, that's kind of what's happening. You can do that pretty much all day today, and possibly even tomorrow during the Cat Grizz game. Uh, Tiny Tales and Story Time are kicking off at the Missoula Public Library at 10.30 this morning. You can go check it out, get your kids' experience with reading. Usually it's perfect for kids from birth to about five years of age, just before they start heading into school. And why not get them ready into school by having them learn nine new words a day. Uh, preschool play group at Roots Acre Sports Center. This is from walking to five years of age. Get your kids in tune with their body. This is from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Preschool play group is a favorite for kids and parents alike. For play groups, their gym becomes a playground. Fun stations, activities throughout the gym. Parents and children choose activities that interest them the most, including obstacle course, pit games, trampoline time, swinging, sliding, climbing, and playing in an inflatable park. Um, every time you come in is a new fitness adventure, and it's $10 and $15 per sibling. So if you have three kids, that's $5 each. Uh, anyways, hands-on science, chemistry, Spectrum Discovery Center, uh, it's three fifty for a kid um, four and over, but if you're under three, you get in free. Spectrum Discovery Center is doing chemistry. Um, come explore chemistry and all its fun experiments with uh, them at the Discovery Bench, and they're doing spirographs in the makerspace. Uh, yarns and watercolor. If you're interested in doing some watercolor painting, you guys can do that. Yarns is a... And, uh, a stitching and um, knitting type deal that they do at the public library all starts at noon. Um, Cribbage and Bridge starting at 1230-ish um, at the Missoula Senior Center. If you're there for lunch, um, they will have a daily lunch there at the Missoula Senior Center. And if you want to destroy people at Cribbage, you can. But And you can also destroy them at Bridge if you get bored of Cribbage and vice versa. Teen Writers Group at the Missoula Public Library every day after school, um, 3.30 to 5.30. Uh, are you a teen writer who needs a little inspiration or feedback? Come to a teen writers group and let your inner artist flourish. Meet places vary, um, but young adult librarian on duty will know where to send you. YMCA Family Fun Time from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. It's $22 per family, and it's a great activity where you could do, do the pool, basketball court, running track, gym, I think they have a cl uh, rock climbing wall, but all their facilities has a lot of um, opportunities for your family to get active together. Uh, predator feeding at Missoula Insectarium. 4 p.m. they'll be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. Every, every Friday, and you can join them as they explain and demonstrate how these bugs consume and uh, um, capture their prey. Come see who is hungry today. In an evening, event featuring scotch tasting at the loft um, presented by O'Brien Law Offices. It's benefit Missoula Cam Community Foundation. If you're a veteran scotch drinker, please join them at the loft and offer your insights and knowledge. It's offer also featuring a wine pole and provides light appetizers and chocolates to complement the scotch. And if you're interested in doing a little family time and drinking, family fun time at the top hat is from 6 to 9 p.m. Bear Bay Dance uh, Springboard 2018, uh, $22 for some contemporary dance or $18 in advance. It's happening, kicking off. Uh, actually, it's been happening for the last two weeks, and I believe it's going to happen on uh, tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday. And they have early, uh, uh, actually, wait, Sunday, sorry about that. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all at 8 p.m. Sunday's last performance is at 6 p.m. It's for the eighth season. Bear Bay Dance is bringing back the audience celebrated choreographer showcase. Springboard 2018 harnesses the best of Missoula's artistic power. New choreography works by both company members and seasonal guests create a dynamic evening demonstrating the beauty, nuance, and versatility of contemporary dance. And that pretty much does it for your uh, Saturday. Uh, I mean, for your Friday. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> settle down, Scott. All right. Uh, there's a bunch of things happening. There's going to be a rock band happening tonight. It's called Diet Sig at the Zach Below. So if you are interested in going to the Zach at 7 p.m., uh, this usually goes from 7 to about 10. It is, it is a re residential area, so they really can't go past 10. And they have a Devil Makes Three at the Wilma. It's going to be some bluegrass folk music. They have Jesh, uh, they have Top Hat Lounge. It's Jeffrey uh, Folkalt. 
Um, it's going to be some folk rock music. The Mighty Flick is going like, to be at the Dark Horse Bar. It's going to be rock music. The Tomcats will be at playing at the Union Club. And the Sunrise Cylinder will be hosting Blue Collar Band, which is for some country taste right there. So those are kind of your events happening that day. I have another art clip I'm going to show you guys. And this is uh, an art clip that will be ending in mid-December. So this is from the Resort Museum. All right, I got all your weekend events starting now. Uh, kicking off your Saturday is the uh, Missoula Valley Winter Market. And it's going to be uh, with over 40 vendors showcasing an eclectic array of local products and uh, farm fresh produce, baked goods, and artisan meats and cheeses to quality art and craft items. Stop by, grab a pastry and coffee. Shop for this week's grocery to buy uh, holiday gifts um, family to family and friends. And this is going to be happening uh, from now until April 20th. Uh, from, and this happens from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Missoula Valley Winter Market. Puzzle Club at Black Hat Bakery, 9 a.m. If you like puzzles, go to Black Hat. Frosty and Rudolph Sing Along, MCT uh, Center for Performing Arts, uh, the Missoula's Community Chorus, and Sing Along with two classic Christmas movies, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman, featuring Christmas costume parade before each show, a photo booth filled with props, Christmas-themed concessions, and a lot of door prizes. <laughs> Family fun at its finest. Sing one, sing all. Two matinee screenings at 11 a.m. and one at 1.30 p.m. And this is happening at MCT, all starting tomorrow at 11. And speaking of tomorrow, MCAT Saturday drop-ins. MCAT every Saturday from 1 to 5. We have... I got to find it. I got to get it. There it is. Animation for kids every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Your kid gets to come in and enjoy some stop animation, some live action filmmaking, editing, and all sorts of wonderful, uh, wonderful activities that MCAT has to provide for your kids. Only for $10, and this is for kids age 9 to 13. We make exceptions for some kids who really want to be part of this. We've had a six-year-old before because their siblings have been here. So we're not too biased when it comes to uh, age, but we always like to prefer nine to 13 year olds because they know they know a little bit more about what to do. Uh, while other kids are more or less like asking to like, <laughs> all right, I don't wanna, I don't wanna knock any kids. So I'm just gonna continue <laughs> moving forward. Cat Grizz, Brawl of the Wild. It is the 118th Grizz Cat game happening tomorrow at 1 p.m. Um, you can probably watch them at various locations, the Press Box, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, any, basically any bar th that um, is smart about business will be uh, showing it on their TV screens at those places, uh, at various places along Missoula. Unless you got a ticket to the Grizz Cat game, you lucky ducks, um, 1 p.m. tomorrow. Um, Missoula Public Library is doing a maker space from 3 to 5 p.m. Hey, you get to do some stuff with a 3D printer. A literal garbage fire also happening tonight and tomorrow night. It is continuation of artists in resident series. Downtown Dance Collective, Downtown Dance Collective is proud to prevent Sean Kirkpatrick in a literal garbage fire. It's a comedy musical art all that it all lives here in the post-apocalyptic world of laughs and goofs. With this, what will? There's been a murder. There's been a slight chance of programming. It seems to. Uh, 
a sketch show that has been derailed by a murder most foul. What will become of the show? What will become of art? Won't somebody think of the children listen? So that's kind of what the whole idea of this musical is. A literal garbage fire contains adult language and some gun-related violence. So it is a PG-13 plus uh, um, show. I'll host at the Downtown Dance Collective tonight and tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. If you're interested in doing a little dance, the Missoula Senior Center does a Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance. It's like swing dancing. Actually, no, it's like line dancing. Uh, swing your partner around and around, but a little more traditional. Uh, Wood Hogs will provide music, uh, and Amy Leston will call. Workshops start at 7.30 p.m., $6 for members, $9 for non-members. If you're under 18, you're free. All ages, no experience, or partner necessary. All our dances are taught and called. So when you have one partner, you get another partner. They usually swing your partner, and you change partners after like 10 seconds. It's pretty fun. Um, slam and poetry for change. This happened on Sunday, remind you. Uh, 6 p.m. Imagination Brewing Company. Poets be a voice for change. Empower community with poetry that matters in these times. Audience expect the un unexpected here. Impassioned poems, high energy voices, original works, poetry that matters, leans towards uh, topical poems of protest and liberations. And it's basically three main performances, one poem prepared with two um, in, in the kitty, in case, because it's going to be like a poetry competition that moves forward. Uh, no props. And be there at 530 to check in. And it's going to be at Midland Nation Brewing Company on Sunday. So I just want to give a little shout out to all that stuff and more. If you're interested in finding out more about uh, uh, more of those events happening as well, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is a wonderful source for everything Missoula. Hey, what's going on, Missoula? Just go here. It's, it's right here. It's, it's right here. It's, it's basically made for you that anybody can just go to and just be a part of. All right. So that pretty much does it for me. If you want to find out more information about my morning show, you can go to my website at wakeupmissoula.wakesite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can Google me. you find me on YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter, and all sorts of wonderful things. All you got to do is look up the keyword Wake Up Missoula. If you want to find out more about MCAT, you go to MCAT.org for all your programs and more. Government, education, public access, all in one Actually, all in two channels. <laughs> MCAT is on channel 189 and 190. And I'm live on it right now. So, But I won't be live on it much longer. For I'm going to send you off. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I I have lots to do this weekend as well. So, And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ranth. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.